to Getting Sketchy Live, brought to you by TheVirtualInstructor.com. And now, let's get sketchy. Hello there, everyone. Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com, and welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, the greatest live broadcast in all of YouTube. I'm glad you're joining us live if you are. Of course, if you're watching the recorded version of this sometime in the future, uh, we're glad to have you along, too, for the next hour or so as uh tonight we try to create a drawing for you inside of 45 minutes uh, with some art instruction sprinkled in there as well and i'm joined as always by my good friend and fellow artist and art teacher ashley hurst who's sitting right over there how you doing tonight i'm doing great thanks for asking i hope you guys are doing well out there from oklahoma vancouver wales tennessee virginia and all the other places thanks for chiming in with your location i'm glad to see that we've got uh guests from all over the country and all over the world to yeah. see what matt has to draw for us tonight it's one of my selections but i'm a little i'm a little envious i don't get to draw it but i'm glad to see how matt's going to tackle this subject yeah what what we did for this season well first of all for those of you who don't know what what is getting sketchy uh we we have a time drawing exercise and of course uh it's called getting sketchy for a couple of reasons one because the resulting image is usually a little sketchy because we only have 45 minutes right. and also because well i'll speak for myself i'm pretty sketchy as a human being so a couple uh, of sketchy dudes yeah. over here yeah just a, a dual meaning there uh <laughs> anyway um and this season we try to do something a little bit different each season or at least we have for the last few seasons um this season we have two wheels like we always do and uh the wheel is spun i think i have a video here um and at there the end are. of the night's broadcast i'll spin the medium wheel as you can see here this was the first uh week's uh wheel spin and then we also have a wheel with uh, photo references this season that we've already chosen so uh, i will be spinning the wheel for ashley's drawing that will happen next week last week ashley spun the wheel for me and it uh, landed on pen and ink slash marker mm -hmm. and, as the medium. And uh, the subject matter, of course, was Ashley's poppy flower image. So I'm going to be doing a uh, image of a poppy flower tonight. And I'm going to be using pen and ink. And I'm also going to be using markers. But I've got a little bit of a trick up my sleeve. Um, and I'll share it with you in just a minute. I'm still within the rules. Um, but there's mm, I'm stretching sounds, the rules a little like bit. Sounds like we're pushing the uh, envelope tonight. Yeah, still using markers, though. Uh, anyway, if you want to uh, follow along with the photo reference, you can find it on the community tab or under the community tab uh, on the uh, YouTube channel. So if you uh, look underneath this video, you'll see a little picture of my face. If you click on it gently so you don't hurt me, um, that you'll see the option to go to the community tab. <laughs> and uh, there you'll see the photo reference that we're working from tonight. Of course, I'm going to have it up next to the drawing uh, as we create the drawing. And speaking of drawing, if you want to uh, take your drawing and painting skills to another level, yes, there is a fantastic program waiting for you at thevirtualinstructor.com. Uh, our program includes a variety of drawing and painting courses on a variety of media and subject matter, pen and ink, watercolor, colored pencils, pastels, oil pastels, charcoal, graphite drawing, oil painting, acrylic paints, all, all of that is covered there. Uh, we also do weekly live lessons, which are more in depth to, than what we're doing here and getting sketchy. Right now, Ashley's leading us through a series where he's creating a figure drawing with charcoal. We got a couple more sessions left in that series, but all of our recorded live lessons all of our live lessons are recorded and stored in our vault, so you can go back and watch all the live lessons we've ever done all the way back to 2012. And there's also weekly critiques as part of the Members Minute, and there's a year-long curriculum also available for art teachers. Uh, so there is a ton of stuff included in our program. If you want to learn more about that, there's a link in the description below. If you want to just check out three of our course videos and eBooks for free, there's also a link below for that as well and that will put you on our mailing list so uh, i send out newsletters uh, pretty much once a month now um, and that will put you on our newsletter list and i'll keep you updated with all the new lessons that i post on the website and also uh, the videos that we post here on youtube um, and is that it oh if you haven't done so yet or if you're new to the channel uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click on the notification bell so you're notified when a new video is posted or when we go live like we do here. Uh, so again, if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you doing? It's completely free. Um, all right. Uh, I think it, that's all. Is that everything? I, I, one more thing. Um, 
If you have any comments for myself or Matt, put them in all caps to make sure we see it. And I see Buddy has done that already to set yeah. a good example for the rest of us. Buddy says, this program is so great. Thanks for that, I'm going to have to concur with that. And I saw it because it's in all caps. So yeah. we won't think you're yelling at us. Just uh, type in all caps. The chat box gets rolling pretty fast. And sometimes you guys are talking to each other. Uh, so that in that way, we'll know your comment or question is for us. You can ask anything um, about in tonight's program, about tonight's program, or that is art related. And we'll... Uh, we'll come up with or make up an answer for you. And um, I see that Oksana has made a comment, evening all, right above Buddy. And I believe Buddy is from Germany, right? That's right. So uh, we're, you, you, don't, you don't have to be in the United States to join our program. That's right. Uh, so I'm just telling you that. But Oksana, I'm not sure if you're the same Oksana or not, but I received a fantastic colored pencil drawing a couple of days ago. And if that is you, boy, I am absolutely blown away. I'll definitely be critiquing that in a future Members Minute episode. Oh, I can't uh, wait to so see that. I, I, I was absolutely blown away by the colored pencil drawing that I received. If you are the same, Oksana, I'm just taking a moment here on YouTube to tell you that it's really well done. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, I think that's it. All right. Um, I guess it's time to take a to switch over and take yeah. a look at our reference. Let's do that now. All right. Uh, over here on the left, you can see the photo reference that I'm working from. Again, this is uh, one that Ashley chose um, or Ashley picked out. We had we we picked out 12 images and Ashley picked out half of them. And I picked out half of them. And uh, the first week was me. Right. That's right. And what did I do the first week? Uh, the fly. And did a pastel oil drawing pastel. of a fly. No, that, no, that was regular. Pastel. That's yeah. right. Regular soft pastel. And then last week. You did the polar bear. The polar bear, uh, also in pastel. In pastel. Yep. And, and by uh, the way, Jan H says in reference to you pushing the materials envelope tonight. Yeah. No, no pastels. No pastels. No pastels. No. No. no, no. Proof <laughs> that I have not weighted the will. Will. That's uh, right. Anyway, um, the surface I'm going to be working on tonight is Canson Heritage Hot Press watercolor paper, and uh, this Ooh. watercolor paper, of course, is an absorbent paper so that we can apply water. So I've got a little bit of water here because I'm going to be using it to activate the marker material that I'm going to be adding, which that's the hmm. little bit of the wrinkle, and I'll show you the show you that in just a minute. Uh, by right. the way, it, the uh, art materials that I'm going over right now, all of those are linked in the description below this video. Those are affiliate links. So if you do purchase uh, through those links, I do receive a commission for that uh, at no additional cost to you, uh, but uh, that Canson Heritage Hot Press paper is down there. I'm also going to be using a, a, a drawing pencil, a 2H pencil, to sketch things out initially. That should be a pretty quick part of the process as far as my ink goes i'm going to be applying the ink using the steedler pigment liners these are fantastic pens they're disposable uh they're they're relatively inexpensive they're a little bit more pricey than the micron pens but they last a little longer than the micron pens as well so if you're a micron pen fan you'll really love these if you've and never they're tried a good them value because they last a little longer yes uh -huh. and uh, they keep their they you know the micron pens sometimes if you're a little bit violent with them uh, not encouraging you to be violent with your art but if you are the tips kind of get stuck inside they just get destroyed these are a little bit stronger so uh, and the markers that i'm going to be using here are windsor and newton pro marker watercolor oh, there markers. It is. oh yes and it looks like i'm only using blue but <laughs> i'm not uh in fact blue is the only that's color, the color that i haven't isolated. left in the box that's right. yeah so i have all of those uh, markers out at least the markers that i'm going to be i think i'm going to be using and i've made a little bit of a color swatch here too uh, just to kind of get an idea of what colors are going to do on the surface and how they're going to mix and how my pen and ink applications are going to job with that um and as far as the brushes go i will be using one two or three of these uh these are all grumbacher golden edge watercolor brushes and mm -hmm. these are absolutely fantastic these are my favorite watercolor brushes now they're not for everybody uh they're really more for folks who want a little bit more control with their watercolor um, applications these bristles are obviously nylon that's where they get the golden edge name from but you can see that they are very stiff so uh, it gives you now, quite a bit of control are the, those those yellow or golden bristles are they a little stiffer than the white nylon bristles to be honest difference? with you i'm not really sure if okay. there's a big difference in the stiffness I'm not sure or not. If their di the diameter of the bristle was different between the colors yeah um i, I haven't really noticed a difference yeah. before 
I use, I like the same bristles. Yeah. The golden. Uh, yeah, these are fantastic for control with watercolor. Well, paints. you know, the word control and watercolors, don't, those two words usually don't go together yeah. for many well, of us. So yeah, I know. Um, maybe I often paint with sable watercolor brushes as well, but they are a little bit softer. So yeah, yeah sable's definitely going to be a lot softer. Yeah. And, um, you know, a lot of people, some people paint with Sumi brushes. Those are super soft. Yes. So, uh, you know, if you went, if you had a wet Sumi brush and did that, it would stay in that kind of. Do you bent know what type of bristles or hair are is in the sumi brushes? I don't. Do you? I, I, is it squirrel hair? I think I do. I feel like I've been told by one of my own students, and yeah. that you know because of that, this is suspect. Yeah. I was told that the sumi bristles were made from wolf hair. I don't know if that's wolf true. hair. Yeah, that sounds like a crazy idea to that me. That sounds pretty crazy. It does sound because. Yeah, I would think Maybe we could verify that. Wolf hair. Right. Um, I have. Who wants to try to take wolf fur now, from a wolf? Listen, I have a post on the site um, that is called All About Art Brushes. Okay. And it talks about the structural setup of sure. brushes, all yeah. those different parts. And it also talks about all of the different types of hairs of bristles, and right. bristles. And. None of I, <laughs> wolf is not wolf mentioned at all. Yeah, I'm not surprised by that. Um, so I, I'm I'm suspect of that. I am too. Um, I am too. Maybe that student just they likes probably wolves. saw it on TikTok. So maybe that student is that uh, oh, all, student named Scott and plays then, on a basketball team. <laughs> no, no, no. Are you sure? Do you think he turns into a wolf? That's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, you see his mask from here. Um, I would say that in the sumi brushes, there's probably squirrel hair. There are probably some that are made with horse hair. Probably, maybe, maybe. I'm, they're I mean, probably different. You know. All right, I'm looking it up. Yeah, he, Ashley's on that. He's gonna, he's gonna get it for us. Um, Buddy says, "What are the differences of watercolor brushes, tubes, and pans?" Well, the differences in the different watercolor brushes are basically how stiff they're going to be and how much flexibility they're going to have. Um, and we kind of touched on that a little bit. Um, really not enough time to kind of go deeper in that, but really the difference between tubes and pans is that pans, the watercolor is uh, missing uh, basically the solvent, which the solvent for watercolor is water. So when you have a cake watercolor, you add the solvent, you add the water and take it out of the pan. I also call them cake watercolors. Um, not the kind you eat, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and then the tube watercolor paint has a little bit of solvent in it. And the solvent, of course, for watercolor, again, is water. So um, the tube paints I have noticed are a little bit more intense simply because they're so much more concentrated when you pull them out of the tube. That doesn't mean you can't use them in the same way. And it doesn't mean that you can't get your, your um, pan watercolors as intense as tube watercolors. It's really kind of a matter of uh, what you prefer to work with. I have tubes and cake watercolor paints, and um, I kind of go back and forth between the two. Most of the time I end up using the pan watercolors because I am too lazy to squeeze all the tube paint out. But what a lot of artists do is they will squeeze out the tube watercolor paints, let them dry on their palette, and then just reactivate them with water, uh, which is something that you can do. All right. Brenda uh, asks, what sizes are the pens that you'll be using? Um, I'm not totally sure yet, but I think I'm going to be using a point three. Okay. Here, uh, but yeah, yeah, so we've got the point three there, right there. Um, I'm not entirely sure, but uh, the size of my working space here is four and a half inches by six inches, which is pretty close to being proportional to the reference okay. over there. All right. Well, uh, Edie says she's heard of squirrel hair and red sable hair, but yeah. not wolf hair. Yeah, I don't know about the wolf hair. Yes. Um, um, I can't imagine myself. I can't imagine <laughs> them having a uh, a factory where they're like, oh, we got to got to go out to the wolf yeah. pen and or wolf, you know, the the right. pen of wolves. You would have to pay a lot of money for that brush. Yeah. Several several, yeah. Uh, several humans could die in the making yeah. of one wolf hair brush. And uh, let's see, uh, one of our guests whose uh, tag or name is not not part of the not part of the comment says, here's what I found: the sumi brushes brush is made from horse or badger or deer or cat. Or sheep hair, so it looks like quite a yep. variety. And I also saw Lots of different weasel hair when yep. I was googling just a few minutes ago. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Weasel. Uh, now the sable. Wait a minute. Traditional wait a minute, sable wait a brushes. Kitsy cat says yep. Asian calligraphy brushes sometimes use wolf hair. Okay. So, so there sometimes, is sometimes if they can there catch is, the wolf. So uh, Kitsy cat oh. and I are in the same camp. Okay, someone says they listed as wolf hair, but it's really weasel, okay. I believe. Mm. 
And, you know, if it's coming from China, they, you know, who knows if it's wolf hair or not. Right. They might say, well, it's wolf hair. It could be, uh, it could be uh, you know, German Shepherd's hair or Husky's hair. <laughs> uh, yeah, Brenda has somehow... Uh, somehow worked the system oh, okay, so that right. she is it's completely Brenda. incognito. Yeah, I know. That I'm totally crazy. confused. How, how, that how has she done that? How is she so I anonymous? Know, that's crazy. All right. Uh, we, let's do it. We're talking too much. I've got lots of drawing and painting. Bring to up do, the so timer. Let's uh, let's do it. Um, and I'm going to go right into this. I'm going to work pretty quickly because I don't think I'm going to finish this one on time. But uh, there there's go. a lot going on seconds. in here. There really 45 is. minutes, not 45 seconds. So I'm going to start with the middle of the poppy here. The bulb, the seed, I guess the seed pod. The seed thing. And you, you had me concerned last week when you said that you thought poppy flowers were illegal. No, well, poppies, poppies are illegal i believe they're grow. not okay. i looked it up okay good um they because, are it's only illegal to make opium from the poppy all right. flower that's good to know we're not going to do that this is just a photograph we don't even have any poppies right yeah now, well i say that we don't have any poppies here i have poppies that are been in my family for years or at least the at least the seeds have been passed down my great grandmother liked to grow poppies and my grandfather grew poppies from those very same seeds that came from her seed pods and uh, we've continued to do that so we always grew them in our backyard because we thought it was illegal to grow poppies and we didn't want anybody to see um that we had you know we're creating a, a, an opium an opium lab or anything like that that wasn't happening <laughs> We didn't want anybody to get the wrong idea, but they are beautiful flowers. Really beautiful. Yeah, I've drawn a few poppies on site. Um, and I really like the red ones with the intensity of the red against the greens. And the when you got uh, something, when you got light filtering in behind them, it mm -hmm. makes a... For a All right, Con drawing. El Maestro says that um, has pointed out that it's a stamen. I think we're using some technical flower terms here, so we're going to have to up our game. Well, there we is like a stamen seed, and seed the pistols. Yeah, right. That's right. And um, well, I'm just drawing the basic shapes that I see. The larger mm -hmm. shapes here, pretty lightly. I'm not going to worry about the details. I'm actually looking at the negative space up here to kind of get this little. Something I liked there. about the way this image is cropped is there's two green triangles in the corner. Kind of kind of offers a type of balance there. In the opposite corners. And I'm looking at where this top part of the flower comes in. I'm kind of comparing mm -hmm. it with where the the, uh, the stamen surrounded by pistols, whatever <laughs> that is there. Yeah, by drawing in. the negative space, you'll draw part of both of those petals at the same time and hopefully capture their relationship. There is an awful lot of complexity in this. Mary reference. says, illegal to grow poppies? Clearly, you have never driven through California. Well, you know, California is a different place. There's things there that are illegal, that are illegal here, and things that are illegal here that are legal there so including some types of light bulbs got all kinds of got all kinds of different laws from state to state can it can be challenging sometimes when you move around well i like california do you remember seeing do like poppies grow along the roads out there? I, you know, you I've, seeing, what I've been to there, San Francisco and mm -hmm. Los Angeles, yeah. and uh, in San Francisco, I don't really, I didn't really pay much attention to the flora, the local flora. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, in when we were in LA, we really, I didn't see really any much vegetation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, besides palm trees. Uh, but uh, I, I really like Southern California. Mm -hmm. I am I am not a Northern California person, but I could I could see myself living in Southern California. But you know, everybody I've talked to about that says, yeah. But if you'd lived there, you'd you'd want to you'd want to move. My brother lived in Santa Monica for well, I guess about a year. He 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 really liked it there. Yeah, that's in LA. Yeah. Yeah. Brent Dozart says I didn't even know poppies 
were illegal. Well, apparently they're not. It's they're just, not illegal. It's just what you do with them that can make them illegal. So yeah, yeah. growing them, not so much. Manufacturing um, opium or opium tea or things like that, probably. Probably. That's where we cross, cross over between okay. legal and illegal. All these little things down here, my goodness. I should have picked something that was that was crazy like this with all these little things down here this um and i obviously i'm not going to be able to draw every single one so what sure. i'm basically doing here is i'm kind of picking up on a pattern and i'm recreating a similar pattern here just so i have enough time to finish this and even if i was drawing this without a time limit mm -hmm. i'd be doing the same thing uh, because who in their right mind would want to sit here and replicate every little single strand when it really doesn't matter you know uh, we did have a question i need to go back to it was uh, oh my goodness i can't remember who it was from it might have been Ki uh, kizzy cat but it was uh the question root was in regards to your pencil why are you using a 2h versus a 2b uh well it's i'm going to go over the, this with pen and ink mm -hmm. and i don't want a dark pencil like a 2b uh, to be visible, I, I don't want my pencil marks to be really visible in the end drawing. So that's why I'm using a 2H. I usually use an H or a 2H uh, when I do a preliminary drawing like this all the time. I will never, if I'm, if I'm going to be finishing the drawing in a different medium, like pen and ink or, or watercolor or gouache or whatever it is, um, I would always use a lighter pencil. Um, a 2B pencil is a little bit dark and um, what what happens with a darker pencil really a softer pencil um, is that the graphite can smear and it can also mix uh, if I'm gonna make watercolor applications over the top of this even with watercolor markers uh, any graphite residue that's soft on the surface might kind of give uh, the colors a little bit of a grayish appearance mm -hmm. So there, that's why. Those are good reasons. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'll draw with a 2H. Usually that's about as light as I go. Yeah. I, I would never, I usually never use uh, anything darker than a 2, or harder than a 2H. So uh, a harder pencil makes a lighter mark. That's why I'm saying that. All right. So there's the bottom of that one. And then we forgot the bottom of that one. Here we go. You know, um, something a subject like this that has so many of those small details, often in a drawing you can make those details a little larger or less in number, and uh, people that are even familiar with the subject, they usually really don't notice unless they're looking right at the reference to compare it up against. It's going to feel pretty busy, pretty detailed down there. All right. No matter what. I've got Is enough information right, to start time. with my pen and ink applications and I'm going to start with a 0 0.03 as I mentioned and I'm going to start in one of these detailed areas I'm going to be using a lot of broken lines here initially to get some of these uh, details down and um, you know when people use pen and ink a lot of times they feel like you kind of have to stiffen up a little bit and make precise lines you don't really have to your drawing can still have a pretty uh, pretty rigid look to it, pretty controlled look without getting too controlled with your application. Just so, because the line is so fine, so consistent. Right. So you don't have to uh, feel stiff. A little bit of a wobbly line is okay, especially when we're dealing with an organic subject like this. So right now I'm just initially going to be outlining everything. I'm just drawing the contour lines, and then I'm going to look for where I can put some indications of some texture and maybe some value. I don't know how far I'm gonna push the value right here with this uh, initial sketch because we're gonna be adding the color. And of course the color is going to- uh, It's gonna have a value. Add, add, right, That's add right. value. I was distracted because I was getting yet another spam call today. And my, I've got my iPad in front of me and of course mm. it tells me when I'm getting a phone call and uh, it's vibrating in my pocket. Too much so, distraction. So, um, but that was another spam call today. I've had like probably 11 today. Yeah. And sometimes that happens where the spam phone calls are like out of control. And I don't, I'm wondering if that is happening to you guys today. Is that happening to I you? Get, I get about that many each day also. It's getting out of control. 
Now, Orion Nebula has a comment. It's not in all caps, but I want to read it because it goes back to using the pencil weight that you've chosen for your, the, your initial drawing. Mm -hmm. um, she says, I find that I press too hard with a 2H for the sketch. I tend to use a B and then erase everything to just be able to see it. And I actually really like that method too. Yeah, that's a good approach. And I'll use, a lot of times I'll use a kneaded eraser for that erasing and just kind of lighten up that drawing from your darker pencil and it also removes the excess graphite that can bleed into your watercolor. So that's a really great, uh, especially, I mean, I have that tendency too sometimes. I'll be w drawing with a lighter pencil and I'll want to make a darker mark just to be able to, you know, accent an area and I'll, and I'll press down too hard and make a groove in the page that then when shaded over um, looks like a white mark or a light mark. So I support using softer pencils and then erasers to li to lighten your drawing as well. I think, now, And then you need less pencils. Yeah, there's another situation that I'll also point out. Sometimes I like to transfer a drawing or transfer uh, information, visual information to the drawing surface. And when I do that, I use a soft, a really soft graphite pencil. I'll, I'll use like a, a 7B or 8B oh, yeah. and cover the entire backside of the image that I'm wishing to transfer. And then I'll place it over the top of the drawing paper and then press down pressure to transfer the image. Um, you guys know how transfer works, I mm -hmm. assume. Um, but uh, in those situations, usually the transfer has the soft graphite in place and it is too dark. So uh, using a kneaded eraser, you can just dab the surface and make it lighter and it, you create kind of a ghost image. And that's another good technique to kind of have in your back pocket. So even well, it looks though like a lot of people get spam calls, Matt, you are in good company. <laughs> well, I know <laughs> we're it, all dealing, but with it's those. unfortunate that that happens so much. And then, you know, uh, a lot of phones now will tell you it's a spam call, right? My, uh, when I get those now, it says spam li or spam likely, I believe is the message that I get. Well, the problem is I've gotten phone calls from legit people and they're marked as spam and they're not getting through, right? And they're probably wondering why they're why their business is suffering. <laughs> right. Same thing happens with emails that I send out to you guys. Sometimes. Right. Your emails You're, get marked as spam some occasionally. Yeah, yeah. And they're not, you signed up for it, but you know what it is, is people, um, when they're cleaning out their e uh, their, uh, email, they, uh, they want to just get rid of stuff. So they just mark stuff that they signed up for as spam, not knowing that that goes to, um, kind of a registration or a company that kind of keeps up with all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, then eventually other people who want to receive emails don't get them because of people kind of not understanding how all that works, um, which is a bit frustrating too. So if you want to get rid of emails with people that you don't mind hearing from business-wise, it's better to, to, to delete them, I guess, not just mark them as spam so they disappear. Right, yes. Um, yeah, it's really frustrating that that's uh, Jenny the world says, we live in. Jenny from Queensland, Australia says that she uses a 2B pencil and then just rolls the kneaded eraser over the top and that picks up enough. That's a good yeah, idea. That's the kind of same just thing, roll it yeah. over. Yeah. Make long worms out of your kneaded eraser over your artwork. I like to make little miniature sculptures out of my kneaded erasers. Now, um, Ann M. had an interesting question. It scrolled off the screen, and it wasn't in caps, but I wanted to read it. Um, or just had a comment about choosing between hot press and cold press watercolor paper and how it can oh, yeah. be That's sometimes a, a mystery on which one to choose. Um, well, I have a pretty easy system. <laughs> yeah, I wanted you to, to talk about that a little bit because um, I've heard you talk about your choice between the two before. Yeah, um, if I am doing an image like this where I'm using pen and ink with watercolor, I'm going to typically work, not always, but I'm typically going to work on hot press paper because I, you can probably see that the ink marks are pretty crisp and strong, almost like I'm drawing on like Bristol paper. Uh, and um, if I'm going to be working mostly with just watercolor, then I'll probably work on the cold press paper because then in that situation, I want to have the texture of the paper play a role. But in this particular case, I want the marks with the pen to be pretty crisp and clean. So that's why I work on hot press paper. Um, hot press paper tends to also accentuate the brush strokes that you make with the watercolor. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, but if you wanted your brush strokes to be a little bit more 
uh, clarified in a watercolor painting, then you might choose to work on hot press paper instead of uh, cold press paper. But most of the time, in most of the circumstances that most of us are dealing with, then we probably want to work with um, the cold press watercolor paper because if we're dealing with just watercolor, uh, because mm -hmm. that paper really absorbs the water and allows a little bit more of that magical stuff that happens with watercolor to happen, in my opinion, but to each their own, you need to uh, kind of experiment and see what you like best. So I'm right now, I'm just kind of accentuating some of the veins in the flowers here. I'm not going to get too carried away with this, but doing this um, allows me to not only add a little bit of texture and interest here, mm -hmm. but also a little bit of value. But at the same time, I am telling the viewer about the contours and the form of each one of these petals. So these lines are flowing right along um, what a lot of people refer to as cross contour lines, which that can be a concept that's really difficult for people to understand. But it's this is a good way of understanding it here. Um, these are lines that kind of flow one over. One of the best the ways to teach it is to teach it wearing a, a horizontally striped shirt. Then you can use your own arms and body as an example. Yeah, that's a good idea. Jan H says no love for rough paper for watercolors. Oh yeah, rough paper. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rough. No, I'm I'm there, just. There's a there's a there's I think that like. Violent scenes like waves crashing on craggy rocks is good for rough watercolor where you want a lot of maybe um, almost incidental marks and broken color in there or if you're working really, really big. Well, it, the thing about rough paper is that it's kind of, it, you know, it's a wonderful watercolor surface. It's a little bit of a specialty watercolor surface. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're not necessarily going to be able to go into a big box art store and pick up some rough paper uh they're mostly going to have just cold press and maybe hot press. right cold press seems to be because it's middle of the road i guess it's what the big stores kind of uh kind of stock regularly maybe a maybe a pad or a block of hot press paper and rough paper is expensive too compared to other watercolor papers so yeah left rough out but rough paper is definitely fantastic if you're going to be working only with watercolor um, i would definitely not use rough paper if i was using pen and ink now you can see i've enhanced some of the line quality here and there i'm going to continue yeah. to do that uh, and what that means is i'm just making some of the lines a little bit thicker in areas um, so we have a little bit more variety in the line and that of course will help to create the illusion of form because it kind of creates a sense of a shadow. So I like to make the line a little bit thicker on the bottom of elements. But having a little bit of variety is very important because if you think of your favorite food, you wouldn't want to eat it every day for the rest of your life for every meal. Well, when it comes to art, we don't want to see the same thing over and over again. So a little bit of variety is important. Um, so it kind of is a double whammy. It helps us understand the form and maybe a little bit of the light within the scene, but it also can create some variety. We've got a couple of comments um, waiting to be addressed. First is from Buddy. She says, Matt, cross contour is just to follow the surface of a subject, like if you could touch it, right? Yes. I think that's good. You can think of a cylinder. You know, and you want if you followed the form that where you can feel the surface changing, that would be the direction that would you would use for cross contour lines. Um, yeah, here uh, let's see if I can find an example sitting around me. Okay, here I've got a watercolor marker. There you go. It's All a right. Cylinder. Um, if I was to take my finger and move it around the watercolor marker, it would create a line. Okay. Uh, now, if I'm looking this direction, if you're looking at the subject that direction and I'm still making that line around there, that's basically what a cross contour line would be. And we can see the, the cap, how its black edge looks curved when you tilt it away from us and follows the curve of the form. And if yep. you ran your yep. finger yep. along the, the, uh, you know, the marker, your finger wouldn't change 
to a different plane or if, to a different direction. So shading the longer way would not be cross contour because the lines wouldn't change direction to follow the curve of the surface. And on many subjects, the cross contour lines are imagined. You, you know that they're there and uh, you just kind of imagine them. You can kind of think of a to topographical map. Mm -hmm. um, and but in this particular case, the veins in the flowers are actually visible. So yeah, they're, they're more than cross contour lines. They're also um, well, they're, they're still they're still they're also just contour lines, where we can right. where we can uh, see the character of the petals. Now, when the why would it be important to know cross contour lines or or make decisions about cross contour lines when you're applying the medium to the surface, whether it's pencil or paint or whatever it may be, um, if you make your brush strokes flow in the direction of the cross contour lines, then not only adding color and or shading, um, but you're also creating a little bit of that illusion of form. Um, yeah, you're just giving your viewer more information so they can imagine, um, you know, the form and the volume is on the, out of that flat surface, the illusion that you're creating. It adds to the illusion. Right. So, so that's good with pencil or color pencil, even if there's not like gaps between the lines that we see in uh, Matt's ink work now. Right. So when you're trying to make decisions on what direction you should color or paint, then you can think about the cross contour lines and let your brush strokes flow in that direction. Oh, look, there's a little bit of green down here. Oh, there is. Just a sliver. Margie has a, qu has a question. Um, it's looking for a recommendation for watercolor paper surface for watercolor pencils specifically. I think I've done some watercolor pencil work on cold press paper. Yeah, I would actually suggest cold press paper for watercolor pencils. Um, I have done a few drawings on hot press paper, and I'm really not real happy with uh, how the hot press paper performs with watercolor pencils uh, because the, the with hot press paper, like I mentioned, the brush strokes are kind of accentuated. Um, and with watercolor pencils, your pencil strokes are kind of accentuated on hot press paper. Mm. And that's not necessarily something that you really want with watercolor pencils. Me personally, I would rather um, have the image look like a watercolor painting, even though I used watercolor pencils. So that's why I prefer to use a uh, watercolor, uh, a cold press watercolor with watercolor pencils. All right, Melody says 23 minutes left. You've hit the halfway point, and I think you're doing well. Oh, I got plenty of time. Yeah, you do. I haven't looked up, but um, so I'm concentrating these cross contour lines in the areas where the value gets a little bit darker. So you can see right here, we've got kind of that little pattern that's happening up there. It's darker there. I need to probably go back and concentrate the lines here too. Um, and I'm also not using any cross hatching in this image. I'm trying to stick with just hatching. So maybe you've noticed that as well. Mm -hmm. um, let's just continue over here. So to kind of create a little bit of a concentration of lines, you'll see that I'm starting out with kind of a couple lines and uh, let them be a little bit broken. And then I can go back in between these lines and add more to make things darker in more of a gradual fashion. I like the broken tips. It makes these black lines feel like they taper or fade away. Yeah, yeah. It's you a, know, a pencil, you could just lighten your pressure and the line would literally become gray or, or lighter gray, but this kind of gives us the same feeling. Yeah, with pen and ink, we really can't create those gradations without manipulating the line in that way. So there is a little bit of a weird thing that happens here where this goes up, kind of changes direction. So I'm going to go ahead and skip over to this side and then come back over here to make sure that that kind of stays consistent. And we don't have something weird happening here, which which kind of weird anyway, isn't it? way that changes direction. It's mm -hmm. almost, maybe it's a different pedal. It may be, you know, that area is out of focus, so we yeah. could be missing some information there. Orion Nebula says, plenty of time. That sounds like famous last words. Yeah, we've said that before, both of us, and then looked up at, with two minutes left and wish we had still yeah. had 20. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, I do have to say, maybe share some, a little bit of sad news today, uh, but I think it's relevant because, um, because this particular person 
uh, was influential to both Ashley and I. And today we learned of the passing of um, the principal that first hired me and Ashley uh, as to, art teachers. Yes, as art teachers. And um, this particular guy's name is Stan Elrod. Uh, is a fantastic educator and also a great administrator. Um, and who really cared about the students. Uh, it, it was always evident that he cared about the students. And he mm -hmm. always made the teachers feel like they were the best thing to walk the planet. Uh, he always gave a lot of encouragement uh, to his teachers. Yeah, he had me convinced that we were the absolute best faculty on the planet Earth. And, you know, when he was there, I do think we did have a very strong I do, faculty. I now. do, too. I think people lived up to the... Uh, lift up to his vision of themselves. And I actually learned a lot from him at, when it comes to administration. Um, so I tried to do the same thing with the art teachers. I tried to talk about how great yeah. our, our program was. Mm -hmm. And I think people bought into it and believed it. Um, and I think it was true, though. But uh, he passed away unexpectedly today, so um, we will... Miss him, of course, in this community. He was actually running for school board and was no doubt definitely going to be elected. Yeah. Um, so. Well, just, he held all the other positions, I think, in the school system. So yeah. it was time to step onto the school board. He was a coach. Uh, he was an he athletic was a director. Science teacher. Uh, and he was also uh, the head of the athletic directors at Central Office, too. For the whole county? Mm -hmm. And he also was the first principal of one of our newer schools. That's so true, yeah. He, he helped start one of our high schools. Okay, I'm going to go back and make some of these lines a little bit thicker under there. Um, mm -hmm. Again, just to kind of create a little bit more variety and create a little bit of an indication of some shadow here. Well, Enrique said, had said this is, a, this is a really good looking ink drawing, but wait, there's more. We're going to add, Matt's going to add, watercolor markers to it. Yeah, this is just in preparation. But you now, could keep going. You could keep going, and it could be just an ink drawing. It could be, yeah, yeah but I, am, I'm, I haven't set this up for just an ink drawing. Yeah. Um, and honestly, I don't have enough time to make this just an ink drawing. Y'all know. Uh, because there's so much more I'd need to well, do. Well, and you'd have to really start goes. working up the value in the seed pod and other areas that uh, you could do you know, a lot of that value with the color application. That crown is looking good. Well, thanks. And if you want to see some really good examples of line quality at work, if you're a comic book fan, mm -hmm. um, if you just look at the inking work that a lot of comic artists do, then you'll be able to see how important that line quality is. But I think, you know, even with minimal line quality, a little bit of variety in the line, you can see how important it is uh, just to create a little indication of shadow, some differentiation between the different petals in this particular case, and a little bit of an indication of the illusion of form. All right. Um, but he I'm, says, let's dedicate these sessions to the best teachers in the world, and people are naming their favorite teachers. Oh, that's a great idea, and buddy. My yeah. favorite teachers were Miss Wedge in the first grade and Mrs. Peterson in the seventh grade. I don't know what would have happened to me without those two people. Oh, my goodness. I've had so many great teachers. Um, I would say a couple of my favorite ones that I've had are Miss Till, Miss Barbara Till, who was a, a biology teacher. Mm -hmm. um, she, oh, I was this close to majoring in biology. Um, I think you've heard my medical illustration story. Yeah. Um, a large part of that was because of her. She actually brought in uh, one day in anatomy. I, my, actually, my senior year, I took um, AP biology and anatomy and physiology in the same year. So I had Miss Till for like half the day. And mm -hmm. she brought in an uh, actual dead human arm that she said oh she my. found on train tracks behind her house. Whoa. I don't I don't think that's true. I think that <laughs> I think that she had those from like some medical facility, but that's what she told us. I found these on train tracks. Yeah. Um, um, and uh, another great teacher I had was huh. Mr. Webb, who is mm. uh, now I, well, the last time I checked, he was a principal. 
Um, he was my art teacher in the seventh grade, and I actually took private lessons from him, me and my friend did. Oh, wow. Uh, so uh, he uh, was very passionate about education, too, thus going into uh, you know administration. Um, all right. So now I'm ready to get rid of the pencil lines, and I'm kind of shaking a little bit as I do this with the kneaded eraser because... It's so fresh. My ink <laughs> might not be dry completely. So I'm kind of taking a light touch. If my ink wasn't dry uh, completely, then of course it's going to smear. So I would not recommend doing this this soon, but I have no choice. All right. That's so right. Uh, most of that is erased here. Do -do 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 -do. I'm looking forward to seeing how these watercolor markers perform. I am too. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, let's get to it. So I'm going to start... Uh, right here in the center, actually, and uh, I've been looking at this image, and it's got some pinks and greens. Obviously, that would be uh, perfect for a uh, complementary color scheme. Complementary, that's right. Um, there's also yellows. We could kind of push things a little bit more purple and have a complementary color scheme. If there were some oranges, we could have a secondary scheme there where we pulled out the oranges, the purples, and the greens. Um, We'll just start and see where things go. So I'm going to start here with uh, the uh, sap green here, and I'm going to start in the darkest area right underneath this middle portion of the seed, or whatever this is. Matt, you might be interested to know that Phil44 says that he found a hand when walking his dog. No kidding, it can happen, he says. Well, I believe wow. that if Miss Hill actually had found this, uh, that hand on the railroad tracks as she said mm -hmm. uh, that she probably would have turned it into the police <laughs> knowing <laughs> that might have knowing miss teal that probably would have been what she did okay. so i don't think that um i think she told us that just to make it dramatic but i'm sure it's possible to find dead body parts anywhere <laughs> Well, I, you know, I've got a story about that. I think I probably mentioned it on air before. Brent Does Art says, Miss Kopsky, she taught me my color blindness was a unique weapon and not a crutch. And, you know, one of my best art students was red, green, colorblind. Okay, so I have applied the watercolor marker. Now I'm going to activate it with some water. And the thing I've noticed about these watercolor markers is you have to work kind of quickly here. Uh, because the the marker will dry on the surface if you don't. So I'm going to work quickly to activate this and try to get as much of the marker-like lines out of this. Jen asks, what are those markers? I missed it. And E.R. Delaney says, I ask a question, but it must have gotten deleted somehow. We'll go ahead and ask your question again, E.R., and we'll be glad to check it out. Thanks. Uh, you can see I'm blotting this with a paper towel a little bit. I'm going to add another couple colors to this um, after I've got this green down a here. Blotting. It's not exactly a match, and that's fun. Now I'm going to cool it up. Actually, we can come back to that. Uh, so I'm going to let that sit, let that stew there for a little while, and now I'm going to get. Let's see. Is this alizarin crimson? Yeah. I'm going to start working on the flower petals while we let that first application dry a little bit. Oh, that's a nice color. And I'm going to start here with alizarin crimson. Again, I'm going to concentrate it in the areas where it's dark. And we'll just go ahead and pull some of this down. Again, I'm trying to go really quickly here uh, so I can activate this before it dries. Barb asks, does it matter what paint brush you used? And uh, it's personal preference, but I'll be using a watercolor brush. Matt is using watercolor brushes that have golden bristles. And there's also the white nylon bristles and a natural hair like sable. And if you have a preference between any of those uh, three, then I would use your preference. I do like the, the golden bristles myself. They are watercolor brushes, not uh, right. not bristle brushes like you would use for oil paint or anything like that. Short handled watercolor brushes. And the brand name is um, Golden Edge Brushes. Okay. By Grumbacher. All right. So you can see how quickly those watercolor markers start to to be activate or start to become a little bit more permanent there. 
So I'm trying to spread this color out a little bit as quickly as possible using a lot of water. And then we'll come back with a little bit more of a purple, purple, purple or color, purple or <laughs> a color that's more purple, <laughs> a color that has more blue in it. But he says, so these purple. are, these markers are watercolors that need to be activated. Yes. Now, is there a limit? Like, do you have a certain amount of time to work them with water before they set up or can they yes. always be that's what i was they, curious they about. can be kind of partially activated but they are definitely they're like semi semi set they're definitely better to use as quickly as possible okay so keep that in around. mind so, you wouldn't want to cover your whole page with the markers and then start softening edges with watercolor you need to use the water as you go right and uh, that's why i'm kind of doing this in sections and you can't tell but i'm kind of in a frantic state when i'm trying to mm -hmm. activate these um i've used these a couple times i think i used it for getting sketchy when i did sushi maybe uh, a couple seasons ago but um i have noticed that they they do dry up really quick uh, so you do have to work really fast all right, ER has retyped his question. He says, I bought Strathmore gray toned paper after watching the two of you use it, but it seems that when I'm drawing my sketch, there's always a fingerprint. Please help, it's so annoying. Hmm. Um, there's I'm going to assume maybe you were drawing in charcoal because Matt and I draw in charcoal or white charcoal on the gray paper. Um, pretty often enough and um, I don't know if it would help you uh, I'm assuming the fingerprint belongs to you yeah I would, I would assume you have a fingerprint <laughs> bandit or something going yeah. on there somebody's sneaking in there into your studio and uh, putting their fingerprint in there but I can tell you I try to keep my hands out of and off of my charcoal drawings with a bridge and this is something we've been talking about and using in the live lesson that the um at eight o'clock over the virtual instructor.com i have a bridge that i've purchased it's basically like a brace that hovers over your paper so you can rest your hand on it without touching your paper and putting any fingerprints in there and then also i have a uh, a bridge that i've made and i actually prefer the home the homemade bridge it's the abridged version of ashley <laughs> All right, let's see. That's still a little damp. So I hope that if that's the if that's the issue, you know, that we're getting our own fingerprints because I get them in my own charcoal artwork, especially if it's uh, vine charcoal, which is extremely dusty. Um, maybe working with something a hand. Basically, it's a hand rest, um, and you can actually I purchased a, an, a plastic or I guess it's acrylic or plexiglass. I purchased one of those from Amazon for about nineteen dollars, and then I made I made my own. And I uh, can't show it to you right now, um, but I'm looking at it. It's just a few feet away. Okay, this is a little bit. What color is this? Uh, this is the cooler green, hooker's, hooker's green. It's a little bit cooler than the yellowish green that we got on there, which is sap green. Mm -hmm. And we'll quickly activate this. So we have a little bit of contrast down there. Sandra, uh, Sandra says here in Minneapolis there were body parts being left in people's driveways. They identified the victim, but no clue who is responsible for it. Wow, mm. this happens more. It's more common than I realized. <laughs> Unexplained body. Maybe well, I guess the, that's explained. Maybe it's the fingerprint. They, they were, it. Yeah, that's maybe where this fingerprint is coming through. Fingerprints everywhere. Mm. Two mysteries. Buddy asks, would you recommend these watercolor markers for? Urban sketching, I think it would be great for yeah. That. I think yeah, anything that you're doing field. quick and kind of mm -hmm. sketchy, and you still want that watercolor look, yeah. uh, is really great for that. Bring in a little bit. Yeah, of good thinking. Yellow up here. This is cadmium yellow. Barb says I bought one of those acrylic bridges because of you guys, and I love it. That's oh, you know, fantastic. it takes the it takes the um the the tension out of trying to keep your hand steady, you know, and make a, make that hover your hand over a pastel drawing or a charcoal drawing and make that perfect little highlight with your eraser, or that perfect little dark accent at the end. It takes a little bit of that pressure away because you get to, you know, you have that hand rest just like you were drawing, you know, with your hand actually on the page. So I'm glad that's working for you. All right. So I just looked up and saw that there's six minutes left. So 
Uh, I'm going to be definitely going over tonight because <laughs> um, I have not got near where I want to get on this. Well, the we're we're pretty ready for the next show, and our timer is a suggestion. But you still have six minutes. That's a lot of time. Yeah, I still have a little, a little bit of time, but I've got to add some depth to this color. It's mm -hmm. not acceptable to me at this point. So we're going to grab a little bit of this. Keep working. Paul Roach That's says he's Mello. watching on Fire Stick or, or Fire TV Stick, but chatting on a Galaxy tablet, and there seems to be some sort of a time lapse, maybe between the two, I guess. Okay. And there is a, there's a little bit of a delay seven second delay in case matt and i um have a wardrobe malfunction there's a very small delay in yeah. what you're seeing and it used to be a lot longer not because of the wardrobe malfunction no okay so just putting some of that green in there while it's still wet and let's go yeah. back to our original middle of the flower here and uh, this is the hooker's green Add a little bit of shadow down here. Well, Sandra Kane says, Matt, your drawing looks better than the photo. Oh well, thanks. I do I do um I do like those uh those black lines in there. I like this translation of our photo so far. It just you just feel frantic using these watercolor yeah. markers because you put down some color and you gotta go so quick to get things activated. And you want it to have that watercolory look to it, but you are forced kind of into trying to make that happen. But there's, you would think there's more control, <laughs> uh, but actually a little bit. It's still watercolor, right? Yes. <laughs> wow, buddy says, my father was found by garbage men. That was very creepy. Hmm. Wow. Okay, I'm going to go with uh, some more of this hooker's green down here, and I'm going to add a little bit of black into it. And then we'll try to add a little bit of color over the top. Where's the black? There we go. I'm going to try to add a little bit of color over the top of these little stringy things here, if we can. Really would kind of prefer to add that with another medium. It gave me a little bit more control. Jan says, it looks amazing. So glad to see watercolors. Yeah, we don't always do watercolors because of the nature of watercolor, but the markers allow, allow Matt to, allows Matt to do that in a short period of time. Okay, let's try some yellow ochre here for these little bits. Uh, Edie asks, how long have you guys been supporting yourselves as artists, please? Well, Matt and I are artists, but we're also art teachers. And so um, as long as I have got from, from the time I got out of college, because I also work a day job as a teacher. So about 20 years. And I was in the classroom before, and I was an administrator as well. And um, I've been doing the full-time, the virtual instructor. What, 12 years? Uh, about so, 10 years, 10 years, about yeah. 10 years. I think it was, I think it was 2012 or 2013 when I went in there and quit my job and, uh, and from there it went on All right. and there's that somebody calling us. Susan asks question. Why did Matt choose watercolor markers instead of alcohol markers? Uh, because I wanted, to, I'm using pen and ink with this, and I wanted to have a little bit of a more artsy, watercolory look. Something this. soft to kind yeah. of juxtapose against the or the hard edges of the lines. That, make, that makes sense. All right, so, uh, let's bring in the purple now. So I'm going to bring in a little bit of purple and make this a little bit darker. With a minute 54 left, let this be a little bit streakier. All right, there's that purple you'd mentioned. Somebody earlier had uh, mentioned that the color seemed redder, you know, in your image, but that was through the, the, the first application. And, of course, you've got well, limited colors because yeah, you're working with colors. markers. you got to remember that. It's a little um, bit like working with pastel. You know, sometimes you make a choice that's close, close to the color you see. And 
and and in, in in doing so, keep in mind that value is is more important than the matching of color. Matching the values is gonna it's what's gonna help your artwork to make sense in terms of its the space it's in and turn flat shapes into forms. I really wish uh, these markers were not would would activate a little bit more, you know. Yeah. In in that way, I guess you can get more, even more of a watercolor look out of watercolor pencils because you don't have to rush. They're not they're not starting to soak in or dry. They don't even start to um, to soak in or soak or become permanent ish until you've added the first uh, water stroke over them. Yeah, and, I, you, and you know you could use watercolor pencils and the watercolor markers together. Yeah, or you could just use watercolor with that the watercolor be, marker. Yeah, you can um, you can use all these watercolor media in conjunction with one another, and that may be the answer. Yeah, these watercolor markers are e either full on or really weak. Andrea has like. a good question. Any advice on how to loosen up using watercolor? Yes. Um, two ways. One is to use larger brushes, and the other is to start without a pencil drawing. I know it sounds scary, but start with very, very light color to draw with, with a thin, thinner brush. And then, uh, you know, gradually work up to broader brushes and value, but you don't have to necessarily start with a pencil drawing, and that'll impart a little bit of looseness and better. freshness into your artwork. Or um, you may have to ball it up and throw it away and start over. But both of those have happened to me. <laughs> but I do like to paint um, sometimes without a drawing, just pure painting. And, and look for blocks of color. You can even start without a light um, drawing made of watercolor paint. And you can just start with flat brushes or wider brushes and start putting in blocks of light color. I actually think watercolor forces you to loosen up a little bit. Well, I, I agree. I agree. If you're not loosening up a little bit, um, it's going to be a struggle. You're going to be frustrated because uh, the watercolor has a little bit of a mind of its own. I like to think of it as a partnership between you and nature. And you're going to make some decisions, and the water is going to make a little bit of the decisions as well. Okay, I know. I see that my time is up. Oh yeah, I, I didn't even notice. I, I was just watching your done. drawing. I'm gonna do a little bit more. Yeah, here. you can keep going. We've got some time. Um, just a little bit more. A little bit more of that purple in there. You see, it's it's either all or nothing. It's really strong. With a, with you, a, with some of these colors, they're deep values. Yeah. You almost need your brush ready in one hand. Yeah, you really and your marker do. in the other. I'm gonna bring that purple down here. I guess. Whoever's calling the studio. Edie asks, what's the binder in a watercolor marker, please? I assume it's still gum Arabic, but yeah, I don't know that. I would think that. it's the same. I would assume that. Otherwise, it wouldn't possibly, re possibly wouldn't reactivate or reactivate at all. Sue asks, opinion about Tombow watercolor brush markers. I haven't used those. Have you used Tombow watercolor brush markers? No, but I imagine okay. they're probably pretty similar to those. Yeah. It's a good brand. Brenda says it's looking great, Matt. I especially like the area you um, must that you made purple. Well, great. That's good. I was waiting for that purple to come in myself. Paul says, "Okay, now I'm seeing the purple. That's right. And we had to do. We had to wait a little bit, didn't we? Had to wait for some layering. Well, and you like like we kind of insinuated. You don't have to to." do a drawing or painting just like the reference photo. You know, you don't have to feel like you need to match the colors exactly all the time. Um, all right, I wanna add a little bit of some interest here. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of Prussian blue and I'm going on the shadow here again. Just make it a little bit darker under here and maybe go down here again with the Prussian blue. And all these little, all these little poppies Poppy sprouts, whatever these little things down here. Sprouts. Really, I like sprout sprouts. Let's go with that. Let's activate that and bring a little bit of a cooler feel in here. Uh, 
Jen says that she's used the Tombow markers and likes them a lot. And Sandra mentions that uh, she is using the Artist Loft Dual Tip watercolor brush markers, and they're working well. That's good to know. Thank you for your comments and suggestions. Actually, bring in a little bit of that. Well, let's try it down uh, here first. Jenny has a good suggestion. And it's, this could work for making lighter lighter values from darker colors. She says, can you touch a wet brush straight to the marker nib? Get a little bit of color right on there? Yeah, you can. I, and, and I have a lesson on using watercolor markers, these watercolor markers. And mm -hmm. we do go, cover the different techniques that you can use to do that. But even cool. when you touch the tip of the marker with the uh, the brush with a moistened brush mm -hmm. it still is not quite as intense as you need it to okay. to be uh, so yeah it's kind of a slow process another thing you can do is mark with the marker on like a uh, palette like a plastic palette and um, oh okay then, then lift it up that yeah um, but again it's still not quite as intense and then at that point uh, why not just use watercolor <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess one good reason is that, like you mentioned before, these travel well if you're going to be painting on location. They do that. That's for that's sure. A great advantage. Um, all right. So the painting is still really wet. So um, I am not going to take off any of the tape or yeah, anything. Yeah, it's probably saturated. Right um, but he says, wow, bit. Matt, seems uh, watercolor markers are difficult to control, but this poppy turns out just great. Oh, well, thanks. I, I really, it really needs to have a little bit more layering of color. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the more... Well, I think it's a nice sketch of a poppy, and it feels like it's got a... The, the, the image that you're, we're working from feels like it's a cloudy day, and yours feels like a sunnier day because of those, some of the warmth, I think, in your light. So oh, okay. I like the sense of color that you've created. Well, I do like some of the bleeding the that's happening there, yeah. here and there. Um, I hate that I've lost all those little guys down there, though. And there's really no way to go back on that other than to, uh, you know, use some gouache or right, something like some that. Right, some gouache, I think. And, you know, I had thought before we began, um, you could also put frisket or a liquid mask it over yeah. those little details, maybe. Yeah, but in the amount of time that, we would, that we've we got for that. That's slow work. We wouldn't have had time for that. <laughs> yeah. But that is um, something Never that I this. really like to do. I don't know if... If you consider that watercolor cheating, um, we don't feel like there's cheating to making good art. We just try to use what works. And uh, I do like Liquid Mask, and one of those brands is Frisket that works who really would, well. Who would think that's cheating? Well, that um, a... you know, I've uh, heard people suggest that, uh, you know, different, like drawing with a pencil under a watercolor is I, I maybe shouldn't use the word cheating, but it's not pure, like saving your saving the whites of your paper by avoiding them would be pure. Purists, purists we're talking about here. Right. Well, okay. Well, I'm, you know, you know how I feel about purists. Oh, yeah. We know. <laughs> uh, now, I, I feel like whatever you do, whatever gets you the end result that you want right. is w what you ought to do. Um, I really wish this had a little bit more of an interesting color i think i've got an idea here i'm going to add a little bit i know our time is up but yeah, i'm going to add we've this chat box has been moving and we've missed some comments uh, appreciate those comments i'm sorry some or quite a few have rolled off the screen yeah, I like uh, before that. we were able to read them brenda says i love it michelle says fantastic artwork matt paint blush says i like how you use that red to make uh, that purple marker less blue like in the photo yeah, that's a, that's a nice comment, uh, sort of the interplay between those two analogous colors. Norlene earlier had asked if there are any lessons on the website for Procreate. And I can't remember. Um, and I did, yeah. I did a live lesson yeah, there's, in Photoshop, and I feel like we used Procreate one of a those bit. lessons. Yeah, just a to, little bit. Just to draw Just to in. show the variety. Of, to, yeah, that you, you can know. pull images into different programs. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I'm not really sure if there's one dedicated just solely to Procreate. I'm not really sure. That's a good question. Well, we're about to start lessons like that in my classroom. I've got 50 iPads, brand new, all fired up, and uh, Procreate was just loaded on them in the last month or so. 
So, well, that's not working. I could figured be a maybe the slice tool could maybe pull some of well, those Well, you know, that, it's interesting that you went for, the, went for the knife because on thicker watercolor paper, like the 300 pound, often you can cut your highlights back into it. Well, this is a slice tool. So it's a plastic oh. uh, tool that can cut into the paper, but obviously it's not working and that area is still pretty wet anyway. So I'm gonna call this one finished, even though I'm disappointed I lost all that down there. You can put um, those back after it dries. Yeah, and maybe with a little bit of gouache down there. Mm -hmm. I probably going to have been too careful, but this, I could have been more careful, but this is a small little image, and I was using some fatter brushes, and I was also kind of rushed, uh, obviously. <laughs> but uh, that's the that's area the, that I would uh, kind of, of alter. Timer. Yeah. Um, and maybe add a little bit more color and depth to the petals there. But um, anyway, I uh, wish I could take the tape off, but I can't because I have to spin the wheel. For That's Ashley, right. And this is still, oh my still goodness. really, really wet. Let's see here. Man. What am I going to have maybe to draw I'll, next week? And more importantly, with what medium? We'll pull maybe an edge off and see. All Let's right. See if you get go. a little bit of contrast. Oh, on. yes. Yeah. Oh, it's so satisfying. Yeah, see why I wanted to pull that off? Yep. Oh, well, we'll wait. I won't get, wait on the get rest. too carried away. Because um, the paper is really buckling. You can't see that on camera. But. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to kind of slide this stuff out of the way if I can. Let's get the reference image out of the way and the timer. There we go. And there we go. All right. Lots of great comments, Matt. Thank all right. you for all well, those. All right, well, we'll zoom out a little bit, and we'll get this wheel of spin. So we're going to start with the medium tonight? Yep. All right. So we've done pastels twice and pen slash ink slash marker once. Yeah, and there's no limit to how many of these mediums show up. So if, it yep. if it's pastel again, it's pastel again. That's right. All right, so uh, let's get this centered here. And this is what Ashley will be working with next week for getting sketchy. Oh, my life hangs in the balance. And it's going to be... That's a good spin, Matt. Oh, thanks. Colored pencils. Colored pencils. All right. All so right. I shall be using colored pencils. Colored pencils and give me a uh, heart attack sometimes. I have, not put, I have not put <laughs> any red X's on here uh, to indicate references that we've already done, but we know which ones they are. Correct. Uh, so so we, if we, we land on one of those, again. we will spin it again. No biggie. And it's the All right. cockatiel. All right, the, the cockatiel. So color pencils. I don't and have that folder up. I don't think cockatiel. Uh, let's see if I can bring that up here real quick. Yeah, we can actually, take a look I probably at that. can because I have control of everything tonight <laughs> over here. Um, there Dale it is. said no whammies. And that's love... the reference that Ashley right. will be working from next week. So we've got some soft gradations in there in both the bird and the background um pretty high contrast value on the bird so uh we should we should come out with a with a, I, i'm gonna say we'll have a pretty pretty good looking drawing next week but we'll see yeah i think that one's perfect for color i think pencils, it lends actually. itself to colored pencils yeah that's gonna when, be a good one it, when it landed on colored pencils i started thinking well i hope i don't get the chain yeah because i think that's black and white and i had been rooting for the chain but you so. know if you would have got the chain you know how you could have got around that a white colored pencil on black paper. Oh, yeah. I could have just done that. Yeah. yeah that would have looked great. All right. Uh, well, let's get All this. right. Well, we know, what, we know what our future holds, at least through next Wednesday, and we'll, uh, we'll come up with a plan for the rest of our life after that. <laughs> All right, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for sticking around if you did. Uh, for those of you who are going to join us at the Live Lessons in just a few minutes, we'll see you then. Remember, if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel and click on the notification bell. And if you want to check out the membership program where all the cool kids are going after this broadcast, mm -hmm. uh, there's a link uh, in the description below for that as well. Everyone starts out with a week-long trial for free so you can see if the program's right for you uh, before really committing. And uh, we also offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on top of that. So we want to make sure everybody is really happy. But you guys, you'll be blown away when you get into that uh, and see how much is offered there. Um, all right, guys, I hope you have a wonderful evening. Ashley, have anything else to add? Um, I, again, I apologize if I missed some of your comments, and I'm reading them now. So just thanks for all of, the, of your comments. Um, what Good well wishes, and we'll see you next week. Um, remember what's important and who you love. Yeah, good, good advice there. Um, all right, with that, we're going to go ahead and sign out for this evening. Good night, everybody.